Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome again to Victoria Park in Dubbo uh, for the Burmak Western Premier League Round 10 match between Arana Spurs and Barnes United. I'm Michael Lewis from Live Sports Group, uh, just warming up ahead of this uh, second match. First match was a 2-0 victory for Waratahs over Macquarie, and a very good match it was. I think we'll start with the conditions uh, first of all. Uh, there's no wind to speak of. Uh, the uh, air is sort of very fresh. I've never seen as many blankets, including myself, in, in the stand here, because uh, we're tucking down a few degrees, which is probably why they've rolled out an Englishman for the second match rather than the first one. Well, it feels like perfect conditions. You know, players aren't going to be overheating tonight. And I think this match is probably going to be an absolute cracker. I'll, uh, I think I'll start by running through the teams quite quickly. So at home, we have Arana Spurs of Dubbo. In goal, Bailey Delaney. A defence made up of Connor McDonald, Jared Buckland, David Ferguson and Archie Cader. Midfield of Jake Setry, Jake Ferguson, Duncan Cahill. Actually, I'm going to put Jake Ferguson up front. Followed by uh, Justin Pickering on a wing. Jared Corby, Licio Campora. And just because I want to mention him twice, Duncan Cahill. Subs of Aidan Shields, Les Usher, Deacon Howard, Luke McClure, and Ben Manson, who is the sub slash manager of Arana Spurs. For Barney's United, manager is Josh Ward, and he's also the striker today. In goal, Marcus Tiepo, a defence of Alex Elliott, Benjamelli, and Michael Aid. Uh, there's Dylan Hawes, Jarvis Murat, Charlie Ross, Jackson Fuda, Kenny McCall, and Tyler Medham. And on the bench is Brook Brock Logan and Rowan Edwards. And the first thing I'm noticing there is I don't have a Grant Kosh and I don't have a Duncan Logan. So while I think Barney's are slightly higher in the table, I think with Barney's missing just a couple of their key players, this is going to be a very even match. Arana are, are probably going to set up in a 4-5-1 with Jake Ferguson as the main striker which gives them a very dominant midfield. I've always been a big fan of Duncan Cahill and Jared Corby as well. So it's going to be interesting how fast they break to support Jake Ferguson. The message is always already coming in from Matt Savaro, who who's just seen Jackson Fugger just walk past, but I'm too late to give him a wave. And Stephen Tung is cheering on Spurs. Stephen actually shared the commentary box with me previously for a little while. So hi, Stephen. Good to see you. See you're still around. The refs today. Unfortunately, I've only got the name of the main centre, who's George, but I'm going to say the AR is Blake Gilholm and Toby Plasto. I'm also going to run through a couple of the sponsors that we've got. are on uh, South Dubbo Tavern, Barney's uh, Liddles Power, Gladstone Hotel, TLE Electrical and Tilston's Electrical, certainly covering all the electricals that I know. The WPL sponsors themselves, uh, that's Burmac Financial Services. We've got Optus, Beragoo Sports, Ribbon Gang, and Professionals. And my commentary comes care of Diesel and Blue Doggy Daycare and Seeing Eye Dogs of Vision Australia.
Now Barney's in red and white will kick us off. Arana in a mainly white strip, which is quite a change from their sort of other colours. Barney's getting the first touch, but Elliot's played it high straight away. Calls forced into a header. Murat plays a ball far out to the left-hand side. Medham's decided to put his boot through it. And we have our first shot of the evening. Now it's great to be back on the microphone with no uh, football in orange this week for me to take care of as co-president of the refs or my own club, Dog FC. But I also want to do a shout out to the magnificent commentators that have been dealing with all the matches so far this season, including Aidan Shields, who you heard earlier, Chris Jacobs, Bradley Jurd, Gilly Gilman, Chris Clegg, Harry Hall, Luke Nash and Dan Fredericks. That's a high header already. Now Tiepo opted with the punch there. And it just fell nicely for a header, but just did not hit the target there. At least it was a decisive decision straight away by Tiepo to punch and clear it from his lines. Must have been awkward to deal with. I don't know how much the lights affect him or the, anyone that's on the pitch tonight. Now that's going to be dangerous there. Now Elliot did dwell on it just that extra second, but he was fouled, and convincingly as well. But nevertheless, this is probably going to be a feature of Arana's game today. They're going to probably high press and put pressure on Barney's whenever they're feeling comfortable. What a dominant, absolute tackle that was there by Corby. Now, I've only been able to watch Arana on uh, the live streams since last season when they were the de facto champions, really. Having won the league before... COVID has its say, or top the league, I should say. They've had a few mixed results this year, but as far as I can see, they're strong again. Similar personalities, I can see similar names. And if Barney's are going to take some points away tonight, I think they're going to have to earn them. Bailey Delaney restarts us with a goal kick. Solid clearance by Fudder. Ball over the top to Medham, who's taken it on his thigh. He's done well to try and get a shot in, but what a challenge that was as well. Ferguson and Cato with the double challenge there. Cato put the challenge in. And it clearly ball. Medham's just taking a second to get up. Heavy challenge, but fair.
Charlie Ross with the corner. It's long and far post. And a punch from Delaney, or at least just lifting it out of the danger zone. Josh Ward ensures that he gets the throw, but he's not going to take it himself, leaving it to Jamelli. Offside called there. So it just feels like the perfect evening for some soccer, to be honest. Dylan Hall's trying to use his shoulder to pass. Great industrious by Cahill. I'm liking the early whistle work from this referee. Nice and clear. Barneys will be hoping a repeat of what they did last week here in Dubbo with a win over Macquarie. Barneys get away with something here. I mean, look at how fast Iran are sort of chasing them down. They're determined not to let them settle. There's a ball giant over the top. Dylan Hawes is right onto this, but he's passed it into the middle with... No Barnstoneworth player there, allowing Garana to clear their decks. <laughs> Kenny McCall's bringing the ball away. Jamelli's now picked it up. Garana just dropping slightly deep. But I think that's very sort of deliberate. They're compacting the area. Forcing Barneys to play a ball through there. And then they can just shepherd it out and start, start again from the back. They're not looking to play short either. Medham's made it through here to, on, to the ball, and they've got a goal. Oh no, it's, Ch it's Charlie Ross. And he's given one of the Ronaldo celebrations for it. Now that came really I wouldn't say against the run of play, but Arana had just, they'd actually sealed the area up and a giant header won in the centre of the park from a goal kick by Josh Ward, just sent it forwards. And Arana's defence were just slightly high and flat-footed. And then it became a sprint. Charlie Ross picked the ball up and just dribbled it all the way until he could get his foot through it and buried it. So Barnstonworth have the lead, 1-0. McCall with the foul there. Lucio Campara winning it from him. It's a high ball that Corby takes down, but the player had already made his run straight past that particular area. Well, 
Well, that just shows how important it is to hold on to the ball into the, in the Western Premier League. That came from their own goal kick, but with the giant header of, of Josh Ward. It was just interesting how high the defence was. But then again, it was an absolute smash of a header clearing the goal kick from Josh Ward. Barney's, I think, now are trying to get their passing going. Little bits of that was good. Irana will be wanting to do the same now. Control the ball, play from the backs. So far, they're playing a lot of balls over the top, which can be effective because they do have some big, strong front players, especially Jake Ferguson. It's a nice ball out from the uh, left-hand side and a good header by Jake Setry. Campara with a nice header as well, sending the goal kick back. Corby gets his foot in. Campara seems to be playing as the sort of defensive playmaker, perhaps. That was him threading the ball through. Just watching Cahill put his head on his hands. Uh, Hands on his head, I correct myself, just there. Just waiting to see him put his foot on the ball. Elliot clears it high. Campara with another significant header. Joining here, 13 minutes in. Charlie Ross has opened the scoring for Barney's. Yet to really see an absolute domination by either side. Ayad plays the ball high off his own. Here's Murat with the ball, playing a quick ball through to Charlie Ross. Murat's going to chip it up. It's fallen to Medham's feet. I'm going to have to... He didn't have much time to react. He did well to get some sort of shot out of there. <coughs> you can see in the comments... One of our frequent commentators, Chris Jacobs, he's happy with Charlie Ross so far. Hope you keep him warm, Chris. I think the ref probably made the right call there with the shoulder to shoulder charge, but more of a 60 40 rather than the 50 50.
Ayad comes forwards, plays the ball long. Good control by Fuda. He's played it straight across. Maratza was drifting in. But Iran do a nice clearance. Gives them a chance to get their shape again. Kampara has made some significant impacts with his header head so far. Not on that particular occasion. It's a nice ball coming in. It's over Halls and short of Medham. Bonnies will be thinking they can build again. Lovely interception though. Been impressed by Archie, Archie Cater. Cater. He's been quite clinical in all of his challenges. And he's certainly got some pace about him as well. Nice work by David Ferguson there. Keeping it in exactly on the line. And now they're actually trying to impact fast. Ball's gone into the corner. Decent work by Ben Gemelli there to actually dig it out and win their throw in from it. Well, the scoreline is definitely reflective of Charlie Ross's, uh, Ross's sort of sweet finish from a quick situation. I think both teams are definitely trying to get their passing game going. Though we are seeing a little bit more head tennis than we are foot tennis. Is that a phrase? I don't know. I had us drop deep. Plays himself actually really well out of what is a pretty tough situation. Good pressure from Pickering up there on the high pass to make Barney's give the turnover. Delaney with a solid pass out to that wing. It's just a little bit too far. We've seen it pumped into there and the player's not there. Kudos to Jamelli there for controlling the situation, just as he did winning the throw in a second ago. But I like the Urana pressure as well. High ball from Tiepo. Minimum of two headers. Cahill lays it off and moves. Corby with a nice touch. High ball over to Charlie Ross again. It was the Ward-Ross combination that brought about the first goal. This one's a little bit too far for him. Now Foot is on the left wing and he's found it across through and he's that's a lovely ball. Dylan Halls is just one step behind that.
That's a cracking clearance under pressure there. McCall's twisting and turning. He's going to play it over to the back. Buckland's going to have to choose which of the two defenders he's, he's got to clear from. And that's hit the post as well. So Morata's actually hit the post there for the ball to actually remain in play. But he had such a tight angle. Now, Barneys are getting their little chances here. There's little bits I think I'd like to see from Arana. A lot of balls going from the back, from Delaney out to the left. Left wing and high. But a little bit too far. This isn't. This one's going right-hand side. Setri's unable to get his header. Marat's got the ball now. Cahill will be coming right across for this. Medham's gone into the corner. Kader cleans it up once again. Now Medham and Fudder are both probing this left-hand side. It seems like uh, a quite fluid formation from Barney's which actually adds a level of difficulty Josh Ward has played a right right wing it's going to run out once again the the white line that you might see on the TV that's actually behind the goal question in from Matt Walker any score between Pano and Lithgow? Uh, I think, Matt, and I might get corrected on this, I think Pano won 3-1. But I'll, uh, I'll find out from the chat shortly. Ball slightly short there, Tiepo, though. Wasn't as short as I thought it was with Corby chasing it down. Oh, well, Corby's just intercepted straight through. Tiepo's trying to get it, but no. Well, Barney's got themselves into a hell of a mix there. There's a ball played back a bit. Jared Corby was on his, on his toes, sprinting through. And Tiepo got in there. It ran away from him a little bit. And number 23 came in and scored. And I'm going to reach out to everybody at home to tell me who number 23 is. But now we have a one-all. That's not going to be a back pass. We have a game on our hands straight away. It's just the tiniest little mistakes is making the difference tonight. And for the... For the goal, I'm actually going to give Jared Corby a lot of credit because he actually read where the ball was going. He was faster on his feet than the rest of the team were. They just got in there to have a touch where Tiepo would have claimed it. Bishesh Bikram tells me it's Deacon Howard. Thank you, Bishesh.
And thank you, Bailey, as well. So Setri has just gone around Medham, and he's still continuing to dance his way through. He overhit the pass, but what a move to actually move between three players there. And I can already hear that the talk is up from Moran. You know, it's it's just one of these things in in the Western Premier League. You you make a you make a small error, it, and then it ends up in your net. And now Barney's are coming through. It's a strike from Ross again. He's caught it nicely, but it's just drifted past the post. Robo Cork. Robbo Colcott uh, seems to be a big fan of number 13. Let me just check my records there. Could be Tyler Medham. Could be Jake Setry. And Daniel Hughes has come up with a question that hopefully another one of our person in the comments can answer. Where's Joel Tung? Stephen, over to you for the comments. Ball is chipped up. Ayad, who has had a pretty good game so far. Interesting looking at the two, let's say, centre-backs drifting quite far apart with when tiepo has got the ball to pick it up. Leaving the players coming through the middle, exactly through this situation here. Corby's on his toes again. He's played a nice back heel to Setri and credit to Alex Elliott there for getting his leg across. I hope it's as interesting actually for everybody at home as it is for me. This is a, a set match, you know, g get your uh, predictions in the comments so we can hold them to you. I haven't got an idea. Setri's played a nice ball all the way across. And Pickering at the far post has had a header. Aiden Shields, previous commentator and now substitute, is warming up down the pitch. He's looking like he wants to get in there and make a difference. That's an awkward ball. Pickering's got the header there. Tiepo's collected it nicely when it was so awkward for him. Once again, centre-backs spread far apart to pick up the ball. I think it Maybe shows the confidence of the Barney's defence there, that they're not going to make a mistake and present it to the Irana striker just straight down the middle. Now Buckland has gone down with an injury here. Well, Buckland's back up, ball high to the far post.
Rowan Edwards is now providing fresh legs and contributing with footer to a corner, which McCall will take. McCall plays it right into the centre. Dominant header from Corby clears it. Elliot's now at the other end. It's just come slightly short. Tiepo will have to be clever on his feet, and he has. It's ever so slightly too short there, but I'm sure Alex will tell me it was perfect. Corby just outside of the left foot through. Well, Howard did the wind up there. He came off a little bit soft as a shot in the end, but I really did think actually he actually was going to just put his boot, th boot through it. I don't know if uh, he was having half a look at the far post as well, which could have been an option. But interesting stuff from both sides. Debbie Williams says Joel Tung is dancing this weekend. Good luck with the dancing, Joel. Lucio Campara with another great header. When he does drop into that defensive midfielder position, he really does clear it. Looking at the formation for the centre midfield, seems to be like Cahill and Campara playing sort of two defense. Uh, sorry, playing as two defensive midfielders, and then Corby is running off, but Cahill actually breaks through. Here is Cahill doing his twist, and he's found Campara, who's taken a couple of steps at the pitch. McCall's coming on his back. He's laid it off to Corby, who couldn't quite get the shot off. It actually spun off the floor quite, quite awkwardly. But Tiepo absolutely gobbled it up. McCall's got a moment. He decides to hit it from distance, though. I'm going to chalk that as a shot off target. Well, now we see the introduction of shields for Setri. The first commentator to go on the pitch straight after commentating. Long high throw. Halls is trying to find his way around. He's danced round one. But a bit of no nonsense defending there by Ferguson. So 35 minutes gone. This match really could be anybody's at this stage. I don't know whether I do chalk it up to two defensive errors for the goals. I think it's actually very good attacking of just some defensive hesitation. Ross concedes a free kick for a handball, I believe. Mm. 
Daniel Hughes uh, says that he hopes Aidan Shield plays as good as his commentary, which could be very complimentary or quite insulting. And here is Shields with a nice touch straight away, trying to take it under control. Halls has laid it off to Edwards. Edwards has turned inside. He's played a long ball, but it's behind McCall, who will have time to gather it. Jamelli receives the ball, plays it first time. Josh Ward has picked it up. He's going to leave it to Elliott. Nice side step there, giving him the chance to move forwards. Ayad's dropped quite far back. Food is now on the wing as Shields challenges. Great interception by Kader, who starts the passing the other way. A loss and a win for Cahill. And a lovely threaded ball as well. And definitely credit to Alex Elliott there, but the break there from Cahill and the weight of the ball was so tricky for Barney's to deal with. Here's Shields trying to find his way through. And he's still got the ball as well. And he's won the throw. Good work by Aidan Shields. Shields retaining the ball there. Now Ferguson's come out with it and he's going to strike. It doesn't quite clear it through. Now it's a foot race between Elliott and Ferguson. It's an A for effort from Ferguson. Probably... I think it was the right decision by the referee. It's a nice cross field ball. Just went bent towards the keeper. Shields thought that was his. Talk from Arana is quite high. Delaney's joining in it, passing on advice to the strikers. Murat's got the ball. I like Murat's positioning in this game. He's up against some significantly bigger people than him, but he's arriving in the right place, and in that case, he's winning, he's winning the free kick that makes a difference. Now, we're going to see a switch here. Josh Ward is taking a break. Brock Logan's going to come on. Brock very much a utility player. Spent a lot of this season in goal, and now he's in centre mid. And he's called straight into play as the ball just runs around him. McCall takes a first touch, plays forwards. Halls has received it. Logan's into play now with Ross. Halls gets it onto his feet. Nice interception by McDonald, stops that run. Shimeli over uh, extends himself. Brock introducing himself to the referee straight away after coming on.
just in Pickering, just taking a, a sec an extra second there. Just a little bit slower to get up, but Coach Ben Manson's going to run across the pitch with him to check on him. So five minutes still to go in the half. I think this is as even as a match that I've actually ever commentated in the Western Premier League. I've got Barney's ahead on sort of shots on and off target, but I'm wondering if that's my poor stat keeping while I'm watching this match. Nice little chip over the ball to Edwards. But Cater comes in with a clinical challenge just to send him wide. Edwards has just turned around. He's playing it to the far post. It's going to bounce over Ross. But he will have a chance to clip it in. Barney's have the throw. This is just a nice little bit of football coming through from Marana. About six, six fast passes has got it through. And then Barney's have done their own counter with one straight hit to the forwards. Halls is now down the left-hand side. He's going to chip it back post. And Edwards has got it. Well, there we go. You always want, you're always trying to get your nose in front just ahead of half time, and that's what Barney's have done. And it was an interesting moment to which Barney's took the lead, to be honest, because we were just watching six zippy passes from Arana playing it out really quite quickly and quite crisply. A small in, uh, uh, intervention by Barney's played. It was, it's straight up to Halls, who was on the left-hand side. He's chipped it in, and Edwards has uh, got a header in. I think Arana will be probably scratching their heads as to how, how they've suddenly conceded. But that is the case. Barney's a 2-1 up. Brock Logan sends one to the moon. And Pickering sends it to the covers. Hans Cunnan enjoyed the goal. Where's Mitch, Hans? His shields with the ball. He's going to try and thread it through. Lovely dancing feet through. He's put it down onto his left, left hand tied for a strike. Ferguson with the solid head there. Well, as we close out the half. This is a cracking match. I'm still, I'm still not picking a winner with only 45 minutes to go. This could go either way. 
Oh, Halls has found himself tricking through, but he's just spun. I don't know how he's kept his feet, but he's dancing all the way around. And a tre tremendous save by Delaney because Arana do not want to go into this half. 2-0, two, two goals down. And that is half time as well. I... That was that was a stunning end, you know. Just the the idea of of where that was, just well. I think we'll have to just take a breath for a second with Barney's two one up through Edwards and Ross, and then Arana having scored a goal as well through Howard. Let's go take a break, and I'll see you in a few minutes. My name's Shannon Osborne, I'm from Burmac Financial Services. We're an insurance and finance broking business based in Mudgee, Dubbo and Orange. We do all types of general insurance from farms, uh, businesses and anything in between. Burmac Insurance is very proud to be part of the Western Premier League and have an avenue for the, the players here locally to showcase their skills and also for those juniors and up and coming players to have something to aspire to. May the best team win. Very Good Sports is a delivery tool that wants to help include people with disabilities and people from different cultures. So through Very Good Sports, we've launched a 3v3 football program here in the Central West. We're looking to run football tournaments with the clubs, not just in the Western Premier League, but throughout the Central West region. So Very Good Sports is super excited again to partner with the Western Premier League. And I think it's an amazing and exciting opportunity for the league to go from 19 to 11 teams. It shows just the opportunity out here in the Central West to come and improve your football. Go the Wolves! I'm Brent Osborne from Professional Bathurst. Uh, Professional Bathurst is a local real estate agency. We specialise in selling, leasing and managing property throughout the Bathurst region. We wanted to get involved. We think it creates a space for football players across the region. It's been great to see towns across the region get reunited with football. From myself and the team at Professional Bathurst, we'd like to wish all teams in the Western Premier League all the best for the 2022 season, in particular the mighty Panorama Goats. My name's Henry Simmons of Ribbon Gang Advertising Agency based in Bathurst. We're a full service creative advertising agency specialising in websites, digital marketing and video. We're really proud to have given the league the sleek look and professional feel that it deserves. We're really happy to see the standard of football being raised throughout the Central West and beyond. We'd really like to wish all the teams the best for the season ahead. And if you're lucky, you might see me coming off the bench in the 85th minute for a little cameo. Take that after work run. Get up before the birds. Train as the sun rises. Ride into the sunset. Take off on that trip. Or set off solo whenever you like. Introducing Optus Sidekick, a new feature to help reassure you and give you the confidence to enjoy every moment. Sidekick is complimentary for Optus customers. It's easy to use and set up. You simply nominate up to three trusted contacts. Then, as you're about to go out by yourself, you just set the time up. When you get back or reach your destination, simply end the timer. Afraid you'll forget? 
you get an SMS reminder when the time window is close to ending. If the time you set is reached and you haven't turned your timer off, your contacts will be sent an SMS from Optus asking them to get in touch with you. It's all part of the Optus Living Network. Optus Sidekick. When you're flying solo, we've got your back. At Burmac Financial Services, you can trust that we have your best interests at heart, offering no obligation risk assessments to evaluate your insurance needs. Contact Burmac Financial Services today on 1800 Burmac or go to burmac.com.au. Danny, go on, play us something. Contemporary Orchestra wants you to audition. Looks like you've got a big decision to make, eh?
Well, welcome back to Victoria Park in Dubbo for round 10 of the Burmat Western Premier League. I'm Michael Lewis from Live Sports Group. Match at the moment is Arana Spurs of Dubbo versus Barnstoneworth United of Orange. Barney's are living, leading 2-1 in the break, just taking the lead ahead of the close of the first half. They actually scored first through Ross in about the ninety in about the ninth minute. Ball long over the top on the right hand side and Ross finished well. Arana hit back with Howard. It was a really nice finish chased by Corby and then Howard just got there right at the last second. And then just before the break, Rowan Edwards. Rowan Edwards gave Barney's the lead. I think the significant feature, though, was Edwards' goal came in the 43rd minute, and then Bailey Design he did a spectacular save. I think it was from Halls, just with about 20 seconds to go. And just how different could this match be if Barney sort of taken that 3-1 lead into the break? If this change is significant, we'll probably be looking back to that moment. I'm looking at how uh, the teams have changed ahead of this half. I think I can see Jake Ferguson, number seven, is on the pitch now. He's one of my favourite players to watch. So he's tall, he's strong. He's going to give Arana a different type of, of target. There is Ferguson with the ball. Cahill making a nuisance, nuisance of himself as he can. He's lost the locks of last year, but unlike Sampson, just seems to be playing it as well. Ball comes sideways off Ferguson's head, but he's done the hard work by not letting them through. With the teams having changed ends, now I'm going to be keeping a closer eye on Pickering and Buckland, dominating the left wing. Halls does nice and twist and turn. Buckland mocks up. Paul's making a nuisance of himself. Just twisting and turning. The ball doesn't move 
far away from him. It's nice. Here is Ferguson. Jamelli actually kicked the ball out there. He's taking a quick throw. Cahill's taking it down. McCall has closed him down quickly. Ross playing a fast ball through to Halls. It's a, it's a pretty big foot race between Halls and McDonald. Two touch step over by Cahill. He's found the ball with at Campara's feet. Cater's advancing a little bit. The offside by Halls there didn't stop what was a pretty clinical challenge there by Buckland. Pickering with a nice strike there. It just hit a Barney and spun off. Took a bit of the pace off, but it actually hit that really not quite nicely. Well, the conditions are cold and hard for commentators. Should be actually pretty good to be on the pitch tonight. Should be able to keep warm quite nicely through running around. There's no wind chill, really. I'm looking at the corner flags and they're not moving. A little bit of passing up the field. That's never going to be hands. He's hit his shoulder. Barney's come away with it anyway. Jamelli trying to find his way through. Cahill's going to bring in Delaney. McCall's chasing, but he sidesteps and Delaney does the sensible thing because he had not only did he have to deal with Hall, he had to deal with McCall. Thumping challenge by Corby there. Just a little pressure on Barney's there. Alex Elliott had just stepped up the pitch as Brock Logan played it back to him. Didn't have much chance to keep the ball in. Pickering's once again, trying to strike from distance, but Barney's are getting in the way. Campora is definitely a top header. Rises like a salmon. And here he is. He's, he's dropped back. Ball's high from Delaney to Corby. Elliott's just played it ever so slightly short, but maybe it wasn't as short as I thought. Pickering's now got the ball. A clever, clever step over. He's just going to run between one or two players. He's drawn the Barneys into the foul. Nicely light on his feet through that challenge he was. So now, Corby's behind it. Campora's behind it. I've seen, Cor I've seen Corby hit, hit these before, but I'd say body language says Campora. Referee sorting out the wall.
Corby does look interested. It is Campora. Oh, and what a save by Tiepo. That was such a difficult effort to deal with because of how it dipped and how it was in the corner as well. I don't know how the players just run through all the way, Ferguson, but he's done it. So Barney's have the lead. Just a little bit more of the talk is with. Halls is dispossessed. Corby's three. Threading it through. Calls from Arana there for some sort of penalty. Referee has decided the tackle was clean. It was a nice free kick. It was a great football all round. Well, Cahill is just trying to thread the ball through to a striker to have a strike. And that's really nice work down the left-hand wing as well. Cahill tried th twice to just thread it through. Pickering, the main beneficial. A big shout out to our international audience, Richard Wood, saying hello from England while getting the haircut. So what we now do, provide entertain entertainment to barbers. Okay, Hills with a lovely ball. I'm not sure. Oh, it was just short of uh, Jake Ferguson who threw his head sideways. And then I think it was a little touch by Corby that just sent it wide. There's a signal for a corner though. AR has, has seen something. That's high. Oh, and there's a big header as well from Pickering. They're definitely a danger from set plays here. It does seem to be Cahill's delivery, and there's there's height in this Arana side. They're just slightly bigger than the Barneys, and that's significant on the set plays as they're crossing it in. Barney's made a switch here. Edwards, the scorer of the last goal to hit the net, has been swapped with Medham. Medham's been actually having a very good game as well. He's, uh, he's using some pace and, and doing, uh, he's, he's getting the chance to get his feet on the ball. So I think Medham has, has had a good game. It's quite, quite good to switch the players around. Jake with two or three nice touches there. Certainly hearing what Delma Ferguson has said to cheer him on. It's just a little bit of loose play at the back, trying to retain it, but not being in the right position. Barney's quite advanced there. It's almost like a four on three situation just as it settles down there. Buckland puts his head to it again, gives Jamelli a second throw in in a row. Buckland with another header and there's a free kick for a uh, 
for a high foot. Nice signal by the referee, indicating an indirect free kick for those referee purists out there. Conor McDonald sends it, sends it far wide to Setri, who heads it inside. Ball's come away from McCall as he's tried to control it there. Campora's hit it forwards. McCall has done a quick back heel. It's ended up with Murat, who's played it wide. Was Dylan Hall somehow manages to retain it, and now it's a foot race that he does win. Brock Logan's significantly just touched it through to Murat, who dances over one challenge by Corby. Here's Medham wide. And there's a strike from Halls. Delaying the ops to use his right boot to clear it. And now here comes Arana at the same time. Cahill trying to go wide right. Big challenge by Elliot who has them height on him. So he can stretch out with his long legs. He's just twisted that through now. And here comes Cahill just sifting through again. But there's a nice challenge there. Just waiting to see who it is. I think it was Brock Logan. I really still can't pick a winner of this game. I don't think I'm going to be picking a winner in the 89th minute either at this rate. There's just nice passages of play from both sides. It's Ferguson just ju juggling it. He's going to try and twist and turn. That's actually quite nice play there, I think, from Medham. Coming all the way back to make a significant impact. Striker on striker. <laughs> McDonald plays the ball through to Ferguson. They're normally side by side but Ferguson is quite advanced up the pitch. McDonald's going to get another chance here. Four Barneys are actually in a diamond just below that, so I can understand why they're just booting it over that slight element. Setri has actually done some nice footwork there to win a throw-in. He's going to take it himself. Plays it to Cato. That's a nice ball across. A little bit too close to Tiepo to interest Pickering. Tiepo has dropped it to his feet. Ferguson's noticed and is trotting over. High ball through. Delaney gives McDonald the call. Delaney actually Slightly uh, miss hits, but it goes perfectly to, for Corby's header in. Buck Buckland goes with safety first. Charlie Ross is going to be jogging over here. Headed by Ferguson out there over the halls. Russell Pollard's predicting that Aiden Shields should be su could be the super sub for Arana tonight. Aiden's ready when we required. That's what I can see. That's Brock Logan with the strike there. Now we're going to see some subs, and now we're actually going to see the introduction of Ben Manson. So the player coach has seen enough and he fancies a bit of it. Pickering's chipped it through. But I think Ferguson's just gotten off the pitch. He might have been the person to chase that down. Manson's just come on. Manson's running across at pace. Chimeli with a long ball. Halls will chase. It's a foot race between him and Ferguson. Uh, 
No, an earlier offside. As a referee myself, I like the AR's decision there to delay for the touch. Arana are noticeably getting balls onto the pitch quicker, so they're feeling like they can do something. If they had any fear, they'd be slowing it down. That's a strike and a touch as well. Now, I think they're all going over to congratulate Ferguson. And it was an absolutely super strike from distance. I wonder whether that actually took, uh, took a small deflection off Manson. I, uh, I heard a touch, but either way. Even if, if it took a touch off of Barney, the fact was it was a strike and it was on goal. And what, what a strike as well. And Manson is playing the ball to Corby. It's just run across Manson again. Once again, we have a big game on our hands. Just thinking about how clean that strike was for from Ferguson there. Absolutely thundered it low. Whatever touch that I might have heard, Arana knew that the strike was Ferguson's. Now here's the Barney's response. Off goes Cahill, absolutely at pace. Elliot matching him step for step. There's two or three Barneys have come over together. There's a collision there. I think it's going to be a yellow for Benjamelli. It's either for the foul or stopping a promising part of play. Barneys just need to keep their heads for two seconds. They've conceded what was a, uh, a cracking goal by Arana. They're just getting caught on the counter-attack there slightly, which is why I think Jamelli's had to take, take the card for the team. And now we have the two Arana players, Kampora and Corby, lining up again. I'm not entirely sure what they're appealing. But we saw the last strike, last free kick taken by Campora. I wonder whether Corby's going to say, this is mine. It's, it's Campora. And it's another fantastic save by Tiepo. And the Barney's defence surround him and clear it away. Campora is, is just having dramatic effects from these uh, beautiful free kicks that he's just getting down low and hard. So Campora has been played onside here. 
Shimali's blocked it and he's picked up the ball as well. Playing it long. But out for a throw. Barney's momentarily rattled, perhaps. Giant hit from Jamelli there. I think there's a sense of frustration in that. Obviously, he's just taken the yellow card. And there was a big challenge seconds after. Which Oh, there's a small mistake by Jamelli, who recovers with a beautiful challenge, and he's going to challenge it again. Corby's got it now, and he's hit it across the wide. Campora doesn't manage to get his shot, but Setri connects with it like an absolute traction engine. I don't think Barneys are doing anything significantly wrong right at this second. I think Iran are just a little bit buoyed by the goal. It's, it's come from a long shot, maybe with the smallest of deflections, and they're probably feeling just that ever so slightly disappointed, but at the same time, I think it's more actually Iran have taken the cha challenge of they're feeling really good after that goal. That's actually a really good recovery by Murat there. You know, the if he'd have been stolen with three Urana players coming after him. Kampura's challenging Elliot here, but Elliot has done really well to keep it. He's going to have to make a decision, which he, is what he's done. Credit to both players in that. This tiny little challenge is getting in underneath Barney's feet and exactly typified there. And this is where Iran are actually geeing themselves up. Jared Buckland has just nipped there and stolen it. Benjamelli just had two seconds when the ball was under his feet and he receives another challenge. He's not getting much space at all to do what he does. And Ferguson with the header, just those tiny 50-50s are going 51-49 in the favour of Arana right this second. And the talk is coming from them as well. Great run by Murat, who's taken it absolutely flat control. He's trying to find someone. He does. Charlie Ross is just getting underneath. Kenny McCall's just trying to make himself space, but he can't. Manson's got the ball, played it off to Pickering. Pickering's just played it a little bit too far for Setri to chase. Manson's going to follow up on Ayad, though. Elliot's now under pressure, and he's had it legally stolen, and what a strike there. As that's going to be a foul. Ayad didn't like uh, the challenge he received from Pickering. The ref wasn't keen either, which is why Pickering's got a yellow. This is just a fantastically tasty match. 17 minutes to go. Even in the scores, even on the pitch. Arana just having that little momentum right at this moment. Question from Diane Doolan. Where is this? We're, uh, we're at Victoria Park in Dubbo tonight.
Now the extended delay is while TFO's down. As uh, Pickering came in on the back of IAD, I think IAD has collapsed onto TFO. Elliot and IAD are having a long conversation with the referee. I think the referee made the right decision though. He blew for the foul. He's shown a yellow. We're just seeing whether TFO can continue. Well, Barney's are just having a tough couple of minutes, but they're far, far than out of this. They just need to get back to what they were doing. Tiepo's good enough to get a strike on that. Kampara with what is another dramatic header. Very similar to what Josh Ward produced with Charlie Ross's goal right at the start of the match. McCall's just played that over the top. Is it going to drop for Halls? He's just twisted it through. He's just trying to find it. It's a nice challenge there by Buckland. Setri just connects with that with the with full power. I often describe it as playing FIFA but pressing X instead of triangle. So just a, a recap, I guess, of this frenetic match, which still could go either way. Barney's took the lead with Charlie Ross in the ninth minute. It, it was equalised up by Deakin Howard. In, in the 30th minute, Edwards gave Barney's the lead again in the 43rd, just before half-time. And Ferguson, in the 66th minute, has levelled it up with a long strike. Brock Logan's chipped it over the top there. It's going to go straight into Delaney's hands. I think Hall's appreciated it. He gave a thumbs up. Wants a slight change, I think, to the pace of the ball, but otherwise okay. Fair play to Ben Gemelli there. The yellow card doesn't affect him in terms of how he's going to keep cleaning up. It's like a dishwasher. Now here we have Verana with another chance to build. Cahill bang right in the middle of the centre of the pitch. He somehow uh, went to play it with his right and hit it with his left. This gives Brock Logan a little bit of second. Barney's definitely playing with that fast counter attack, but it is actually quite effective as we've seen. Both of Barney's goals came from fast counter-attacks. And if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Shimali plays the ball over the top. Charlie Ross just hesitates in there. Ferguson leaps in to steal it. Manson plays the ball over. He's just picking up the ball now. Donalds plays a long ball into the right-hand side. Barney's will be trying to get it out, but once again, Archie Cater, one of one of my top players tonight, has done well. Noted Daniel Hughes. Yep, I do say Arana, and I'm hearing it Spurs, so I'll switch it. Twelve minutes to go. Uh. 
A throw in so good that we're going to see it twice. Subs weren't ready. And here is Aiden Shields having a swap for Setri again. He's probably going to run out the clock for us. Campora has just played it through. McCall has just laid it off. And Halls has just taken two steps too forwards too fast. And I'm perfectly in line with that one. I can definitely agree. So McDonald will take this kick for Spurs. It's chipped up on the same wing. It's high. And it's a big header by Elliot, who's had a big match as well. Yeah, Spurs only have been playing with probably one striker, whether it's Ferguson or whether it's Manson. But the fact that they have five midfielders who run fast on them, whether it be Corby, Campora or Cahill, gives them a different challenge. Cahill does cross it in. Oh, and it just zips across. And two Spurs players are holding their heads there. I think the stats of this match are actually going to be quite low because I just haven't got time to update it with my eyes on the pitch. I'm missing shots on and off target and the sheer number of corners. Tiepo has played it high. It's been a back header there. McDonald's sends it forwards. But now they have a chance to build. Food is now sprinting through. It's going to outrun him, mainly because of the, once again, the white line is actually behind the goal. There's a blue line that is the goal line. Delaney gets us started. Ball's bouncing over the top. Ayad actually deals quite well with what was a quite tricky situation. Now here comes Cahill. Jinkin is through, and he's hit that hole, and it's come off the inside of the post. Oh. Wow, indeed. He just, he, he just tricked himself just to the right and used his right, right foot to strike the right post. That's a stunning strike from Cahill. Seven and a half minutes to go. Spurs in the ascendancy. I wouldn't say at this stage that Barney's are hanging on. But just the pressure from Marana is relentless. And just what a game of inches it is when you have a strike past the keeper to hit the inside of the post and then it just rolls past the other post. High ball, Alex Elliott once again dominant in defence. Murat is on the back of Cahill there. Cahill picks up the ball again. He can sidestep McCall, Murat and McCall chasing him again, but it's glued to his feet. Campara's doing pretty much exactly the same and he's going to have the same effort. Doesn't quite hit the post with that one though.
Barney's on the advance here, trying to jink it through, and he's, he's found Medham, who's twisted the ball, but it's gone straight out for the goal kick. So, here we go. Cannot take our eyes off this one. Logan and Kampara finding the ball. It's actually slipped through to Corby. Logan's chased it down. Pickering's going to try and find his way inside, but he just hits Corby with the ball. Medan plays quick to Fuda, who's trying to find Halls in the gap. Small deflection gave Halls a chance, and there's been a beautiful overrun here. Marat's down from a challenge. Kampara's just running through. There's no stopping. Quick touches. We're up down the pitch again. Marat is through, up, but the ball is with Ross on the right-hand side. He's trying to find his way through, and he has as well. Can he put it across the floor? Oh, and it's just... Over the par as well from McCall. This is stunning. Goal kick, corner, sorry, corner taken over fast. It's fallen now to McCall as well, who's hit it. There's big shouts for handball, but he's hit. Referee has instantly pointed to the shoulder or at least the sleeve, which wouldn't be a, which wouldn't be a handball. Ref was very quick to signal where it is. Whew. I'm looking forward to a glass of water at the end of this as well. Jamelli has played a high ball up. Ferguson is up. Cahill has actually headed it backwards. Hall's just trying to twist it through. But Cater has made a clearance. Ben Manson feels like he's done his bit to replace Boy Ferguson for the last couple of minutes. That element of fresh legs. They'll be trying to hit him with whatever passes they can. And they're going to get a chance because it's Spurs throw. Two minutes to go, pick your winner. I'm not. Barnes have continued little passing here or there, but now we've got a surging run. Ball's landed at Kampara's feet. Now it's a wind up from Corby. Well, he hit it with power there. Probably just lent back ever so slightly. Probably the last substitution of the match. See Dylan Horse swap for Rowan Edwards, who scored that second goal. There's a back header there, which we'll see Charlie Ross running on. Yeah. 
Barney's throw, which Ross will take. Jamelli's come up the pitch. Marat's making the run. He's got a low center of gravity. Once again, I think we're appealing something that actually has trailed off the pitch already. Here's Cahill. Goes, goes to the right, switches to his left. Pickering's up. I add with as clean as a strike clearance as you can. And that is the final whistle. Well, I tell you what, that was an awesome match to come and watch and bring to you. Um, just non-stop, end-to-end stuff. Uh, really, any side could have won that. Uh, Spurs definitely had a little bit more of the second half than they had of the first half. Uh, Barney's uh, definitely were counter-attacking beautifully as well. And I think probably the fair result is is to all all i can say is we've we, we we've had a fantastic match to watch i'll just run through the actual scorers for us charlie ross opened the scoring in the ninth minute for barnstoneworth howard equalized it up for spurs in the 30th barney's once again took the lead through edwards just before half time and there was a significant save from delaney as as well in about the 44th minute Ferguson levelled it up for Spurs in the 66th minute. And that's how we saw it through. And that's not forgetting a couple of cracking free kicks from Campora and some cracking saves from Tiepo as well, diving so cleverly down to his bottom right hand and bottom left hand, respectively. All I can say, it has been an absolutely brilliant match. I uh, hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, that's, I think that's everything from us here, Michael Lewis and Murray McCloskey of Live Sports Group. We look forward to bringing you another match next week. See you soon. At Burmac Financial Services, you can trust that we have your best interests at heart, offering no obligation risk assessments to evaluate your insurance needs. Contact Burmac Financial Services today on 1800 Burmac or go to burmac.com.au. How many subscriptions do you have? One for entertainment? And one for news? And meditation? One for sport? And one for music? Whatever you're into, you can now manage select paid subscriptions in one place and save up to 10% with Optus Subhub. Discover what's trending and save by bundling them all together. Streamline your subscriptions with Optus Subhub. It starts with yes.